With Michael Jordan's 1984 Nike Air ships recently hitting the auction block, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity for us to place the Air ships into their historical context and also break down the technical specifications of these shoes. Nike released the Air ships in 1984, and they only survived for one year, and they've never ever been retroed. Air ships were the first pair of Nikes worn by Michael Jordan in the NBA and he actually wore three different colors, white and gray, white and red, and black and red. The white and red colorway is up for auction now. The black and red colorway was banned by the NBA. You're looking at a white and navy pair that was game worn by Larry Nance. Interestingly, Nance won the NBA's very first slam dunk contest in 1984, which was the same year as these shoes. I want to temporarily move Nance's ships out of the way and let's have a look at this book, Soul Provider, by Scoop Jackson. It breaks down the first 30 years of Nike basketball, starting with the Blazer, which was Nike's first high top basketball shoe ever. And check out this amazing early example of the Nike Blazer. When you look at the tag right here on the tongue, you'll notice that there's no registered trademark on here which means that this pair was probably from 1972 or 1973. And you'll recall that 1972 was the very first year of Nike. Nike Blazers were named after the Portland Trail Blazers, which are the home team located closest to where Nike is headquartered up in Beaverton, Oregon. Let's move the Blazers out of the way and have a look at this book. I was given this book as a gift when I was in law school and I used to sneak it into my classes and read it underneath my desk. The book's amazing. It's got a lot of great information, some vintage Nike ads, some drawings of shoes, great pictures. My favorite part of the book though is the way end where there's actually a year by year catalog of Nike basketball shoes. And this is really gonna help us out right now as we place the air ships into their historical context. So you'll see right here is 1972, and here's the Blazers that we just had a look at. You'll also see up here is the Nike Bruin, which was the first low top basketball Nike. They were named after the UCLA Bruins. And then have a look at these two pages right here. So this is the 1970s of Nike basketball. And you can see that the shoes are very plain and simple. For the most part, they're white with a black swoosh or maybe a red swoosh, but the shoes really all look the same. And as we flip the page and get into the early 80s, it's still really similar with very bland, plain colors. You'll see right here is the Air Force One. Actually, the book has it labeled as 1983, but Air Force Ones came out in 1982. And they're the first Nike basketball shoes to feature Nike Air technology and they were named after the President's Air Force One airplane, which I think is really, really cool. Now, actually, Nike Air was first placed on a running shoe, the Air Tailwind, in late 1978, and it took Nike four years to transfer the technology onto the Air Force One. As we skip a couple years to 84-85, which was Michael Jordan's rookie season, you can see right here is the Air Train High, and then way down here is the Air Ship High. I think it's fascinating that the first Nike Air basketball shoe was named after a plane, then we have a train, and then we have a ship. It makes me think that Air ships were named after spaceships getting ready for liftoff. Although they could have been named after ships like the big giant boat, they are kind of built like boats. But fascinating. What bolsters my argument that these shoes were named after a mode of transportation is get this, the shoes came with an owner's manual. Dependable J posted this picture on October 18th, 2014 to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the NBA banning Michael Jordan's black and red Nikes. Huge thank you to Dependable J. Actually, when I was on my way to meet up with the ball boy and see Michael Jordan's air ships, I asked Jay if he would take some real good detailed pictures of the owner's manual, which he did, and we're going to walk through it in a little bit to break down the technical specifications of these shoes. But before we get to the owner's manual, 
Let's get back to October 18th, 2014. So it was the 30th year anniversary of the NBA banning Michael Jordan's black and red shoes. Interestingly, Michael Jordan did not break out the Air Jordan 1 until November 17th, 1984 against the Philadelphia 76ers. So the black and red Nikes that were banned by the NBA on October 18th, 1984 had to be the Air Ships. Nike has kept up this myth to this day and led us to believe that it was the Air Jordan 1 that was banned. There was an old ad campaign talking about how the NBA banned Michael's shoes, but they couldn't stop us from buying them. But get this, as recently as 2010, Nike released this pair of shoes commemorating the NBA banning Michael's kicks. You can see back here is a little X. And look, they even wrote the date on here as 10-18-1985, which first of all, it was 1984. And second of all, it wasn't even this shoe. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So huge thank you to Dependable J for sending over this owner's manual. Let's have a look at it. What kind of basketball shoes come with an owner's manual, honestly? So we'll break into it. We've got an introduction page. There's a lot of information in here that we'll break down, but don't be intimidated. I studied up real hard on my way to see Michael Jordan's airships, and I'm glad I did because this owner's manual really helped me determine that Michael Jordan's airships are the prototype to the Air Jordan 1 and not the same airship as Larry Nance's or the ones released to the public. So let's have a look at the owner's manual. Airship, a unique cushioning system has been built into the airship that brings to the basketball court lightweight and shock absorbency, usually found only in the best running shoes. I think it's fascinating that they're comparing these basketball shoes to the best running shoes. And really what they're talking about is the Nike Air technology that started out in running and then made its way over into basketball four years later in 1982 with the Air Force One and then two years after that, here we are in 1984 with the Air Ships. Think about it for a minute. At this time in 1984, Nike was really just a baby. They started out in 1972, so they were just 12 years old and Nike Air was barely six years old at this time and only two years into the basketball category. The next paragraph, a polyurethane encapsulated air wedge trademark is located in the heel to reduce impact shock, which can be four to eight times your body weight when landing after a jump. Then it talks about the four foot cushioning. So right there, we were talking about the air wedge at the heel. Now we're at the front of the shoe. The four foot cushioning system incorporates polyurethane pillars. The pillars maximize shock absorbency while ensuring lightweight and flexibility Together, the air wedge and the cushioning pillars provide unmatched comfort and protection against the demands of the hardwood. Okay, so we're talking about the cushioning in the airship. There's an air wedge back here, and there's pillars right up here in the front. On the next page of the owner's manual, we'll actually have an illustration of this, but it's worth taking a second to note that back in 1984, when the airships came out, we did not have visible air. That didn't happen until 1987 with the Air Max, a running shoe. And then in 1988, Visible Air hit the basketball category with the Air Revolution and the Air Jordan 3. So tucked away underneath Nike on the midsole is that Air Wedge. And then up here at the forefoot are the pillars. Interestingly, the Air Force One that came out in 1982 would have said Air right here instead of Nike and Michael Jordan's Air Jordan 1s didn't say anything on here at all. And same thing with Michael Jordan's Air Ships. The midsole was the same as the Air Jordan 1, not as these ships that were Larry Nance's. So we'll flip the page, have a look at page two. The outsole features the exclusive center of pressure flex sole design, utilizing a concave heel area this design aids shock absorbency and reduces the shoe weight. Okay, so we're looking at the outsole and it's the center of pressure and the concave heel. 
Now, you'll recall that Michael Jordan's airships did not have this concave heel, which the owner's manual said aids in shock absorbency and reduces weight, which is kind of funny because they just removed this part of the outsole so it's lighter than I guess if it was filled in with rubber and other materials. Let's get to the next paragraph. By modifying the concentric circle outsole design with flex bars in the forefoot, flexibility is increased while retaining excellent traction. So that's talking about the forefoot right here, the concentric circles and the flex bars. Concentric circles, kind of like the Nike Vandal, and then the flex bars. Next paragraph. Amazing to have this owner's manual. Huge thank you to Dependable J. The cup sole wall has been extended up around the heel area to stabilize the rear foot area. Inside is a sock liner designed to prevent blisters and mold to the impression of each individual foot for a personalized fit. Okay, so two things are going on here. First, we have the cup sole wall that's extended up that's this extra piece on the midsole. And you'll recall that on Michael Jordan's airships, it didn't have that extended part right here. The midsole was just like the Air Jordan 1. And then it goes on to talk about the sock liner inside here, which prevents blisters and molds to each foot for a personalized fit. Pretty cool. Next paragraph. Forefoot flexibility and lateral stability are critical to the performance of a basketball shoe. The airship features independent forefoot stability straps, which are incorporated into the lacing system. For greater forefoot control during lateral movements, these straps cover a V-style flex cut on each side of the upper, which aids flexibility. This is really cool. So check this out. These up here are the lateral straps. Remember, I stuck my pinky through Michael Jordan's pair. I'm doing the same to Larry Nance's. So it's got this really innovative lacing system whereby the laces go through these forefoot straps and then through lace holes underneath here. And then there's a V-style cut in the leather underneath here to aid in flexibility and to make it easier to break the shoes in. Remember back in these days, the leather was really stiff and it took a while to make a pair of basketball shoes comfy and flexible. But those V-style cuts in there made it happen right as you put the shoes on. Also, while we're talking about the lacing system, remember that Michael Jordan's Air Jordan 1s do not have these extra lateral flaps. It's much more seamless, sort of stitched on here. And then they have the same thing going up around the ankle. It's also worth noting that these airships are high tops with nine lace holes, whereas Michael Jordan's airships were mid tops with just eight lace holes, and the Air Jordan 1s have nine lace holes, which are slightly taller than Michael Jordan's airships, but much lower than Larry Nance's airships. Let's get back here, finish out this page. The airship is constructed on a new last which combines a snug heel and forefoot with a roomy toe box for a more accommodating fit. It is fully board lasted for stability and torsional rigidity. Now, before we flip to the next page, let's have a look at these diagrams, okay? So we looked at the outsole, the concentric circles, the flex bars, back here is the center of pressure, flex sole, the concave heel. It's worth taking out this piece of paper which is actually a blown up version of the hang tag from the original Air Jordan 1 from 1985. And what I wanna look at is over here, you have the air wedge in the heel, but there's no pillars up in the front. So you can see right here is the air wedge and the pillars on the air ship. And you can see back here again that on the Air Jordan 1, just the air wedge was transferred, not the pillars at the forefoot. Very interesting. Let's flip the page, have a look at the last page here. Now, don't be intimidated. We've already covered all of this stuff. It's just a breakdown pointing out all of the technical specifications on the airship. Like I said, we covered them all already. The same thing on the Air Jordan 1, the technical specifications. 
I'm so lucky that I had the foresight to bring my game-worn Air Jordan 1s and my game-worn Larry Nance airships to see Michael Jordan's airships because it really allowed me to compare all of the similarities and differences between these shoes. As we flip the page, we have the last page of the owner's manual, which looks like the front. So lucky to have this. Huge thank you to Dependable J for providing us with the opportunity to really break down these shoes. I also wanna take this opportunity to thank a few other people. Ever since I've dove into this rabbit hole of Air Jordan 1s and Air Ships, a few people have really held my hand through this really uncharted territory. M. Joe 23 Dan, my good buddy Marv, wrote an amazing article over at Soul Collector. There's also a guy named Aaron Sten, at Bulls History is his Twitter feed. This guy, Marv, referred me to him. I reached out to him and he just started blasting me with pictures of Michael Jordan in the airship. And he had all these pictures on his phone and he knew all of the scores of the early games. This guy knew everything about early Michael Jordan. So huge thank you to Aaron. I also want to thank Jermaine Phase 2. He gave me a helping hand as I was going to meet Michael Jordan's airships talking to me a little bit about TYPS and early PEs. Thank you very much. And then a huge thank you to Rack TV for helping me edit these videos and share them. I really could not make these videos as visually appealing without Rack's help or get them to the same kind of audience without Rack's help. So thanks guys, I couldn't have done this without you. It's been a great pleasure introducing you to the history of the airship.